An NYPD cop who is suing the department has released audio of an interaction that he had with his commanding officer. Now the reason why he did this is because he believes that it shows a perfect example of how his commanding officer was pressuring him to target specific communities and specific people, specifically black people. Now again, this is audio that an NYPD cop has released himself. Uh, and I want you guys to take a listen to it. But before we do so, let me give you some more context into the lawsuit. So in January, uh, Birch, Michael Birch is the name of the cop who's filing the lawsuit, filed a lawsuit against the city and several individual NYPD officials alleging that he was retaliated against for speaking out about what he calls an illegal quota system. A judge dismissed his complaint and he filed an appeal with a higher court last month. Now he still works for the NYPD, but at the time of this recording that you're about to listen to, he was a transit cop. Right now he has been transferred out of that department and he is no longer working under the official that you're gonna hear in the, in the audio. So take a listen and we'll discuss. Who commits the crime? Who commits the crime? Well, it's mostly teenagers, anywhere between the ages of 15 and 19, mostly male, black, and Hispanics. Okay, who are you stopping? Everybody. Right. I stop everybody. 54 tabs of the 820. Mm-hmm. 25 of the female tabs. Okay. Like I said, I stop everybody. I'm not targeting anybody, first of all. You just told me who the bad guys are. Yeah, I know that, but it also there's also other people who are committing violations as well. I'm not saying that there's not violations right. being made. Male, black. I commit the crime. Plenty, plenty of people that write summonses too are male blacks you and male Hispanics. Male blacks. Not for the whole year. And I have. Okay. You're telling me for, for the whole year, I only stop two male blacks for um, summonses. 820. No. January 1st, August 20th. 54 tags, two male blacks, seven Hispanics, seven other, 10 whites, three Asians. So where are you targeting the perks that you just told me? Well, like I said, if there's, if I don't see a perk jumping over the turnstile, who, what am I supposed to do to him? As I say, I'm... These people are not going to pop. You How do I know that? I percent chance a, that a female that Hispanic pop. that I stopped, that she said they did pop, actually, for a warrant, and I arrested her. Female Hispanic. The Hispanics that we're supposed to be going up that, that are committing the crimes. The people that I... Do you think that she's going to pop? Did I think she was going to pop? I didn't know, put no thought into it. If you come up and you're getting, and you'll come up a, a collar, I'm taking you in. This is what I see. You describe to me who's committing the crime, you're fully aware of it. We're not targeting those people. I am, I'm targeting everybody. Two male blacks. Whoever's out there. If I catch. So you only saw two male blacks jump the turnstile? If you're saying that's what's in front of you, then yes, that's all I saw. There's two male blacks for the whole year jumping the turnstile. That's what you're saying is in front of you. I'm oh. not. Disputing that. You're saying that's what I got there? That's what you have. That I'm not disputing here. Well, I'm saying, but well, we're also talking Hispanics as well. I stopped a lot of Hispanics too. Seven male Hispanics, but more than half are females. And like I said, everybody's committing violations in so front of me. Mean, wow. so, so, to give you more context in, in case, you know, it was a little difficult to decipher what was going on there, a tab is basically a citation, okay? And also, when they say uh, the person, uh, did you expect uh, that person to pop, it means when you uh, write a citation for someone and then you find out that there's a warrant out for their arrest, right, and then mm -hmm. you can arrest them. And so the commanding officer is trying to ensure that he targets people who are more likely to pop, right, so they can arrest them for warrants. Um, but the reason why this whole conversation came up is because throughout the whole year, it appears that this officer, Michael Birch, had only given citations to two black males. And the captain's like, what's up with you not targeting black males enough? At least that's the way it was implied through that conversation. So he's, No, it was, Anna, <laughs> you're being way over generous. That was clear. That was crystal clear. Why aren't you targeting black males? So... He, the cops, the commanding officer's excuse, uh, we know it, uh, they're more likely to commit crime. But Birch just told you, I went after everyone who jumped a turnstile. So what did you want me to do? He says, I want you to get more black males. But wait, but they didn't jump the turnstile. I targeted the people who jumped the turnstile. Not good enough. So wait, <laughs> he's like, I stopped the people who were doing something wrong. That is not the right thing to do. No, not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to target black males. It's insane. I, I get it. I get it. What they're going to say is, well, we think black males are more likely to do something wrong. But Birch is saying, I target the people who did do something wrong, not more likely who actually did it in front of me. So what I don't get, I don't know, maybe I missed something when it comes to policing. Are we supposed to pay 
public servants to police based on preconceived notions? Or are we paying these public servants to keep us safe and to go after those who commit crimes right in front of them? Okay, or who commit crimes based on an investigation, right? Is that what, I mean, what are we supposed to pay them for? Is that what taxpayer money is going for? So they can, you know, just keep perpetuating this vicious cycle of discrimination and profiling? Is that, is that what they're supposed to do? Because if that's what it is, then just let me know so I can understand why cops are being paid with our taxpayer money. So they can go out there and profile. There's two different problems here. First is the quota. And so the system doesn't, like, it crushes any dissent, right? So the first judge ruled against them anyway. But we know there's quotas there, are countless NYPD cops. Hey, don't disrespect the cops. The cops have come out and said, there's a quota system. We have to go and arrest X number of people, whether they did it or they didn't do it, right? We, it, I have to fill that quota. So I'm not looking to see, hey, who should I arrest based on crimes that were committed? I'm going to say, I'm going to arrest a certain number of people no matter what. And then on top of that, the second problem is they go, well, if you need to arrest people, the black males, that's who you arrest. That's the reason why the vast majority of stop and frisks targeted blacks and Latinos. Okay, vast majority. It and was over 90% in 90. New York City. And they find the one guy who's not in that, not doing it the way everybody else is. And they're like, look, we got 90% of people going on discrimination. Why won't you discriminate like everyone else? Why do you keep arresting the, or, or writing violations, citations, for the people who are actually breaking the law. Why do you keep doing that instead of doing this, going after the people who are not, but we have decided we're going to systematically discriminate against? Yet, some in America will look at that, hear that audio, and they'll look at it and go, I see no evil. I hear no evil. Uh, what, targeting black males? I know, I just saw a commanding officer, I just heard a commanding officer in New York City to specific say specifically, I don't care who's breaking the law. Target black males. Nope, I didn't hear that. No, technically, it's, he said, well, he said well, half of that sentence is here, half of that sentence over here. So, nope, 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 uh, no, I hear no evil. I hear no evil. There's no racism in the world. The only reason that racism exists is if the Young Turks mention it. If we never mentioned it, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, we're just, we're talking about we're the ones who somehow forced this story so we can divide people, right? Yeah. We're you know, that haters. cop who says, go get, arrest black males, right or wrong, he's not at fault. He's not being divisive. Yeah. When he says, go get me black males to arrest, he's not dividing the country at all. When we report on what he's doing, oh, you see that? Why don't you just shut up and let us be racist like we've always been? Why do you have to point it out? That's so annoying. It makes You're being so divisive. uncomfortable, right? Like, and you know what? I got to be honest with you guys. I love that it makes you uncomfortable, right? Anyone who's watching this right now and you're like, oh my God, my white country. I don't know what I'm going to. Good, good, good. I'm glad that you're uncomfortable. I'm glad that you're paranoid. I'm glad that you're a sorry little pathetic drone on Twitter behind an egg spewing your stupid violence and your hatred and your bigotry, okay? Keep doing what you're doing. You're pathetic. Anyway, one other thing I wanted to mention is that Michael Birch has a really interesting perspective because he's half Puerto Rican, half white, uh, and he looks more white than Puerto Rican. And so he, he talks about how when cops would talk to him about racial issues like this, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know that he's half Puerto Rican, and they would think like, ah, he's one of us. You mm -hmm. know, we can mm -hmm. talk to him like this. He'll, he'll play ball just like we do. And he's like, no, I'm half Puerto Rican. Little did they know, all of these things that they were saying to me were really getting under my skin. And so I love that he's speaking out, and I love that he's doing something incredibly courageous by going after his employers in this lawsuit. And by the way, so if he, like, if he thought the way right-wingers think, what would he do? Only care about his own. But in this case, he keeps saying, the IRS did more Hispanics than anyone else. You know why? Because I saw them jumping the turnstile. Okay, that's why I arrested them, or I wrote him a citation. Yeah. So he's like, I, I wrote a citation for the people I saw breaking the law, no matter what their race was. So why do you want me to twist it so that I go after one particular or two particular races? Okay, but look, this is how we change things. The reason that the trolls and the right-wingers are upset is because they think that it might be working, that we are changing things, that we are shining a spotlight on their racism. Yeah. Now, that's not racism for everybody. It's not all oh, white people. We don't think like you do. We don't do blanket, okay, I hate yeah. white So they, they think we hate white people, even though <laughs> most of the people who work here are white. 
but apparently we all hate white people because they think, oh, I hate all black people. So I assume if they're criticizing anyone who's white, that like me, they hate all white people. Right. No, we don't think that way. We think about systemic injustice, what's wrong with the system, and how can we fix it. So one of the ways that you fix it is with brave, principled cops like Michael Birch, who stand up. You want to, you keep asking for good cops. Here's a great cop who's doing his job exactly right and has the courage to point that out. And my guess is a lot of those right wingers, well, lo and behold, when it comes to that cop, they're not going to support him. Right, of course. Because oh, that cop is seeking justice. Does that blue no. life matter? No. <laughs> All of a sudden, that blue life doesn't matter. All of a sudden, those cops don't matter. See, oh, it's, it, it was never about the cops. It was about the, the system that you wanted to protect. That's what it was about. So, and the way that it changes is through heroes like Birch coming out and telling you what the reality is.